Happy Sunday, everyone. Welcome to Our Issues Birmingham. Happy Halloween as well. Today's guest is David Bowman. He's a uh, tour guide with Birmingham Ghost Tours. Is that right? That is correct. And uh, unbeknownst to me, apparently there are some ghosts in the Magic City. Oh, so many. Uh, we, we are only having to limit it to only 13 per tour, and we have three tours of just ghosting. So quite in, a few. In the city? In the north side of the town. In the north side. Just of the town. north side alone, yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself and about Birmingham Ghost Tours and how all this got started and where you are now with gotcha. it. Gotcha. Well, these were and, actually... and I can't help but notice there's a red balloon oh, to the yes. side. Uh, of it. I would like to present this to you, <laughs> and I'm sure there are some folks at home that understand the meaning behind this. Yeah, and thank there's you. Also, a little tooth dangling from the bottom with the logo of Birmingham Ghost Walk on it. Okay. So uh, those will be sold, by the way, on the tours for thirteen dollars a pop. And I have incisors and molars, so if you're interested in this sort of thing. You're weird. Is that a real tooth? It is not. That is a vintage false tooth Okay. that I ordered myself and mounted. Now, so. I did not know the significance of the red balloon right. because I cannot do scary things. Don't do the horror flicks. Uh, I did the exorcist back in college, oh. which I am told is next to nothing compared mm -hmm. to some things that are out these days. And yet, that is one movie I refuse to watch. It got me. Oh, yeah. It got me, and it still does, but... I know this is connected to the movie It. It is, yes, which I have made myself watch. It is very scary. I've actually watched the first series. They were creepy. These new ones are scary. All right. And as far as the tooth goes, you'll have to take the tours to find out what the significance is about that. Okay. Because well, I, I'm sure I will. Tooth. I've done the New Orleans tour. I've, oh. I've done one in, uh, in London, the Jack the Ripper oh, tour. Oh, you did some good stuff. That was not a ghost tour, but yeah, it's, it's still... akin. Yeah. Uh, and New Orleans has a ghost tour as well. Oh, yes. I think I've done that. I've had people on my tour from New Orleans tours, and they refuse to be taking their pictures on my tour, and they refuse to look at any pictures I have of my tour because they've been around it so much down in New Orleans, they know better. Really? Oh, yes. They don't mess around. Well, back to the original question. Okay. Uh, How did you get this gig? I actually got this gig <laughs> because Wolfgang Poe, who's been doing these tours, it'll be nine years this October. That's a perfect ghost tour name. It is. He is actually <laughs> Edward Wolfgang Poe. He is related to Edgar Allan Poe. And on Edgar Allan Poe's birthday, they congregate at these local taverns and they have like a poetry reading of his works. It ends up being like a family reunion. And Wolfgang will tell you he's just a Poe boy from a Poe family. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it's true in every sense. He needed some help on these tours. And so he put the word out about three years ago and I stepped up to the plate. And uh, I've been doing them ever since Friday the 13th, October, three years ago. So I'm assuming October is a big month. Yes, it's <laughs> huge. In fact, uh, starting October the 1st, we will start using the 7 o'clock hour to begin our tours, and that will give us time to squeeze in a second tour for each night. So we'll have two tours a night, possibly. How long is the tour? Uh, about two hours long. So you go from 7 to 9, take a break, and then maybe 10 Very to brief. midnight? Yes, possibly. Some, something like this that. This is the first year I will personally be doing the double tours, so I'm not sure just to how... How I'm going to hold out, I'm really not sure. <laughs> so, one, how do people sign up for the ghost tour? Well, there's two ways. Of course, you can go on to Facebook, Birmingham Ghost Walk. We're the only gig in town doing this sort of thing. And there's also the uh, website, which is Birmingham Historic Touring Company. So you can learn about them on those sites. Is it a walking tour? It is a walking tour. We actually do have a van tour, which we do occasionally. But during October, it's strictly walking tours. We are able to squeeze in 30 people per tour. And uh, there are no breaks along the way, so you need to hydrate and relieve yourself before the tours because there's no breaks of any sort really along this route. Uh, and it's only about a mile in walking, so it's not like you're walking the entire time. Is it primarily downtown? It is. We actually start at the site of the most haunted hotel in the entire state of Alabama, which was voted that just two months ago as the, uh, the new Tutwiler Hotel. I say new. It's just not the original Tutwiler Hotel, which we do cover on the tour as well. That was a, a nursing home for a while. Actually, it was an apartment building. Yeah. So, but yes, uh, as old as the people were when they were finally evacuated from that building, it very well could have been considered a nursing home. <laughs> and now we're talking about 
it's a Hampton there, right? Right it across is. street from the library. It is, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so you, is that where the tour starts? We actually start right in front of the Tutwiler Hotel. We actually look across the street, and there's that gorgeous facade. Uh, we will head down towards the Redmont Hotel, which is currently the oldest constantly operating hotel in the state of Alabama. And of course, it's also thought to be quite haunted. Uh, and on my tours, by the way, I never say it is haunted. I let you make up your mind. I say it's supposedly haunted or supposed to be haunted or thought to be haunted. And so everything that we have on this tour is fact. Uh, Wolfgang himself has uh, experienced a lot of hours in his life in the library of the city and researched all these tales. And then he's gone from these places to places and interviewed the people who work and live there. And he's gotten all sorts of responses. So that is what we talk about on the tour. Can you give us kind of an overview? Um, I can. I don't want you, you to. Yeah, I well, don't want to kill addition, the deal. Right. No, I wouldn't. Because <laughs> the, the element of surprise right. to me goes with the element of a ghost sighting. Exactly. <laughs> we do cover the two haunted hotels that I've mentioned. We also cover uh, the five pioneer churches of Birmingham, which are almost all thought to be haunted in some way. Uh, we also cover the Lady of the Lake, which is over in East Lake, but the story happened right there at the courthouse, which we also cover. So, um, in fact, we cover the old courthouse as well as the new courthouse. Where uh, the hangings used to take place? All the hangings and the firing squad, the old thing. We too, had yes. firing squad, too. Oh, yes. And, of course, there were other things like shankings, well, used to be stabbings and suffocations and mutilations and starvations. You could pretty much name it. It's happened at that location. So, yeah, that's quite supposedly Stop. haunted. Yeah, they put absolutely, yeah. We had it all, folks. <laughs> there, now, and we were pretty it, much a Wild West party town for a lot of years. <laughs> now, is this pre-1871? Uh, 1888 is our main focus on my particular tour. Uh, we were the murder capital of the world at that time, and then we would had 372 people murdered on the streets of Birmingham. So, yeah, there's a lot of ghosting going on. Sounds like we've gone full circle. Don't oh, yeah. leave me up. We'll take right. a break. We'll be right back. This is Our Issues Birmingham. I'm Tommy Spina, David Bowman, who's scaring me right now. <laughs> we'll be right back. Don't call that. <laughs> Welcome back to Our Issues Birmingham. Um, I had to wipe my brow for a moment. I'm now back uh, with David Bowman and Birmingham Ghost Tours. Um, so if I'm thinking ghost mm -hmm. and, and I want to go out and find a ghost, I'm going to go to a creepy place, and, and sure. naturally, uh, I'm led in my brain to a cemetery. Sure. Uh, do we have well, that going on right here in the Tragic City? I would recommend Oak Hill Cemetery, which is probably our first big cemetery. It's where all of our founders are buried. Is that on the tour? It is actually on the writing tour, but we do, of course, mention This is a little it. bit, it's a pretty good well, it's not that bad of a trek, but it's no, no. It, several well, actually, blocks. We don't actually walk to it, but they would cover it in the riding tour. But we do, of course, talk about it on both of our walking tours because there are so many people buried there that are in our stories that we do have on the walking tour. We can't help but mention it. So, yeah, it's quite historic. They actually do tours over there themselves. In fact, they're showing B-movies over there right now, raising money so they can renovate their pauper's field. So it's kind of neat. Of course, They're showing them in the cemetery? In the cemetery. I'm not saying it's right. <laughs> but it is a way to raise money and, you know, whatever. For um, the preservation of exactly. that cemetery. In fact, I'm unfortunately going to miss their next one, which is, I believe, on October the 5th. It's uh, Plan 9 from Outer Space, by di directed by Ed Wood. So, but I've seen the movie before, so I'm okay. <laughs> Can, if, if I, by chance, mm -hmm. want an internment mm -hmm. at that cemetery, is there space available still? I believe still? there still is space available. Um, I have a family member who has many of his family members buried there, and they still have some lots available, so I suppose you could probably find you a spot to squeeze in somewhere. I don't take up a lot of space. No. Especially if you <laughs> cremate first, then, we'll, then we'll they can just bury drop you, you in right. standing up, take up yeah. even less space. I handled a case one time where we thought somebody had been moved. We decided uh, you could have a cemetery, just dig deep, and you could just bury them and stack them on top of each other. And in some places they probably do. We actually cover world. many people who have been buried multiple times on our tour, um, Father Coyle being one of them. Uh, that happened actually at one of the cathedrals downtown, St. Paul's. Uh, and uh, it is quite a lengthy story, but it's very well worth it because every single detail 
is very interesting. Uh, I, it honestly expanded into 15 minutes extra on my last tour because people on the tour were informing me of extra things that they knew about. Their family were related to some of the people and they could expound on it. So I had to take all that out, start over again because it got to be such a lengthy tour. Now when, now I know that story, mm -hmm. uh, the Father Cole sto story. Right. What year was that? Was it the 30s? That was in eight, uh, 1920. Okay, mm -hmm. 1920 and he had married uh, uh, Ruth and Pedro. A, a Hispanic person mm -hmm. to a Caucasian person mm -hmm. and Well, not just a Caucasian person, but a 13-year-old girl. So, yeah, she was looking to get out of her daddy's house and she found the one way and uh, he didn't like that one bit. So he took revenge on the person that had married them. And it didn't stop once everybody was dead, actually. Well, you know, that's <laughs> a very nice rectory. Oh, it that is. That they Gorgeous, have yeah. there. Which is dedicated Saint, to Father Coyle now. There is a little monument mm -hmm. out front, I think. Uh, well, there is the Weeping Angel statue, and, which is good. And just barely a block, half a block from there mm -hmm. is where the former Jefferson County Courthouse was located. Correct. And that is also where the gallows were located, I do Actually, believe. right behind that at the jail where the YMCA stands now. Right inside the doorway of the YMCA was the... Uh, gallows. And are there ghosts Quite. alleged to be? Yes. Now when a ghost, <laughs> you know, the, the historical perception is that the ghost is some mist mm -hmm. uh, or, or visual, uh, I don't know what the word I'm looking for to say some is. Some ectoplasm. Yeah, something mm -hmm. like that, that you can see. Well, uh, particularly at that location, uh, there's been splashing in the swimming pool at the YMCA, even if there's nobody swimming in it at the time. Recently. Yes. In fact, the people who uh, go through the sauna is said to uh, see people's mist, images walking through the mist. So you won't catch me in that swimming pool, nor will you catch me in that sauna. <laughs> but the scary rooms in that building are actually supposed to be in the locker rooms, but I won't tell you why. So. Yeah, no, I think I know why. I don't belong to that right. place anymore. Right across the street from that is actually an alley, which is uh, referred to us as the Alley of the Shadows. Yes. Which is the most creepy spot probably on my tour. That's um, right behind the title building. It is, yes. In fact, uh, recently the lights aren't as bright as they once were. So you can go down there and you can barely see the ground to walk. It's that creepy. Uh, in that alley, there were at least four murders that we know of. And one of them was performed by one particular man that they thought was Jack the Ripper because it was kind of his style. And they called Where he him, disemboweled yes, the person? They called was... him Harry the Hacker and he was thought to use a hatchet for his dirty work. By the way, this is really bothering me. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You this is our 165th show in our first half. <laughs> first hatchet. First bloody, hatchet. Bloody hatchet. Bloody, bloody hatchet, hatchet and our first balloon. Now, by me touching this, is uh, is anything being that. transferred to Not me? Not this one, no. You know, there's an Italian custom that when we go to a wake, mm -hmm. I don't know where this came from, but they suggest that we do not go straight home because if we do, we you. take death with us. Mm -hmm. And so when I grew up, we'd always stop at Krispy Kreme or the Santa Freeze <laughs> or Grayson's Spinning Wheel. So that's a reality? Mm -hmm. That's a myth reality there? I've heard that before, but now I'm wondering if that's why the donuts at Krispy Kreme are spinning in their trays all the time, because <laughs> you've taken it there instead. <laughs> um, so I want to talk about another spot okay. when we come back from break where if I were looking for a ghost, I'd go to. Uh, but we'll hold off on that for just a minute. Excellent. And, and uh, you promise you're not going to disappear on me? I'll try not to. All right. You're not a ghost. I have to check every once in a while. <laughs> I'm good. This is our Issues Birmingham. Don't be scared and don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to Our Issues Birmingham. I, uh, still got my balloon. Uh, <laughs> and I was talking about, we talked about the alley right. across from the YMCA mm -hmm. and Father Cole mm -hmm. and the gallows and the courthouse, all of these lovely places in Birmingham that we just don't really know what could be found in there right. on any given night. Is it just night? 
Uh, yes, okay. except during the summertime when it just doesn't get dark until like nine o'clock. Yeah. But yeah, we'll generally start the tour about seven thirty. No, I mean ghosts. Do they oh, just ghosts? come out at night? No, shadows can be made any time of the day. And and they can swim any time. Yeah, apparently, of... yeah, apparently that's the case. So <laughs> now I've decided that I'm gonna get off on First Avenue North and take a stroll at midnight through Sloss Furnace. Oh. The most How's haunted, that going to be? The most haunted site in the entire state of Alabama and probably top 10 in the entire United States. Yes. Who, who rates that? How does that uh, get... You know, there's a lot of paranormal research societies out there and they don't have an issue with rating that one as a top place because even you could go down there during the day. They usually shut it up around four in the evening. Uh, but during the daytime, you can go into the charging tunnels there and even if you're in there by yourself, you'll see and hear things that are completely unexplainable. They've even sent government officials and other scientists over there to explain this stuff. But of course, being government officials, they're not about to write ghost on a form, so they simply write uh, paranormal unknown or something like that. So, now, if I go into what? The charging tunnels. It's what actually is that? underground. It's where they used to have the, well, it's part of the furnace itself. The shed? Uh, is it in no, the shed it's area? it's not in the shed. It's actually across the little walkway from the sheds. Uh, in fact, they recently had it uh, worked on because some of the bricks had become dislodged, so they had to restructure it a little bit to make sure it didn't kill somebody while they were down there. But so, yeah, it's back open. So in these charging tunnels, mm -hmm. just give me a for instance of what mm -hmm. one might hear and or see. Well, for example, Wolfgang was down there by himself late last year, and um, he had his phone out and doing quick, well, burst function pictures and he linked them all together and it looked to me like the shadow of Bigfoot walking across the wall. And again, there was nothing there to make that shadow. It was very obvious there was nothing else there. Uh, we do recommend to get a ghost in your shot to use your burst function on your phone. And that way, if you don't have anything to show up in one shot, it does show up in the next one and then it's gone by the third one, then whatever you did get is more verifiable that way. And we also, on our tour anyways, don't recommend using your flash on your phone. Of course, if you like to get some alternate shots with flashes, go for it. But it's just another reason to say that your flash is bouncing back in your lens, causing some kind of orb or mist looking thing. So yeah, we know how to do this. So <laughs> aside from, uh, if, if you think outside of the city of Birmingham, mm -hmm. I know as a lawyer, I go, I have been to a courthouse oh, yes. in a county in West Alabama mm -hmm. where there's the- uh, face, the image the in the window. It, yeah, it, it it looks like a face to me. It does indeed. Even though they've replaced that pane of glass multiple times, it still comes back. So aside from that one, mm -hmm. I'm assuming there are these types of stories sure. and things all over the state. Well, the Bryce Mental Hospital in Tuscaloosa is thought to be very haunted, which we also mentioned on our tour because the architects of that mental hospital were from Birmingham and they had their offices on my tour. So we cover that little building as well. You cover, where is that? Bill? That's actually right uh, across the intersection, more or less, parallel of the um, Tutwiler Hotel. It's between the Tutwiler and the Redmont, actually. So your tour, when you say North Birmingham, mm -hmm. you, you're talking about uh, the business uh, section. Uh, south of the interstate, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, n north of north of Sl Sloss Furnace. If there were a straight line drawn on First Avenue North, more or less, it, yes. it would be the north side of mm -hmm. town. We do, of course, also talk about Arlington, which is a little further down the road. West. Right, and uh, it's actually one of the three historic buildings that are still predating the founding of the city in 1871. There's only three left, and that's one of them, which is quite haunted as well, supposedly. What are the other two? Uh, there is the building up in uh, Center Point, which is a private residence, and there's also the buildings directly across the street from the Paramount Hotel on 20th Street. I'm not Paramount Hotel. Restaurant. Paramount Restaurant, yes. It's the one with the curved front to it, which is vacant right now. Yeah, where Pete's Hot Dogs was. Directly mm -hmm, adjoining Pete's. And there was a jewelry store in there for a long That's time. That's right. And that whole area is actually being refurbished right now. They're putting some nice businesses down there. Yeah, Bonton Hatters used to oh, be yes. there. Yeah. I used to go up there with my dad mm -hmm. uh, for a shoe shine I after, really after having now. lunch <laughs> at the Britlings, which yes. was across the street. Right. So we're going back in time a bit. Yeah. So aside from uh, uh, these places you've named in Birmingham, mm -hmm. uh, uh, including the Arlington and the other, mm -hmm. you didn't really identify the the, pub, the house in Roebuck. Uh, I don't actually know the name if they're calling it anything specific. Uh, like it said, it being a private residence, we are not going to go there and yeah. disturb. Uh, I do 
get, get word through the grapevine that the man that owns it wants to have it torn down, do something else with it. But of course, under city ordinances and uh, National Historic Registration, he's not allowed to. So maybe it'll stick around for a while longer. So uh, outside of uh, this area, what, what do you know about ghost um, events in other parts of the state? Old Cahaba was one of the most haunted sites in the state for a long time and probably still is. They Where is have that? Their own. Uh, it's just south of here, actually, uh, on the Cahaba River. It's actually, it was our original capital. Yeah. So, yeah. so you're talking about heading south on 280, mm -hmm. right um, there where you can see the water? I believe so. I've not been able to tour it myself, yeah. actually. And of course, Mobile, it's quite historic. It has its own hauntings. Yeah. There are other ghost tours in the state. They've got one also in Huntsville. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm not sure that they've been doing it for as long as we have. And <laughs> well, thanks for being with us. Certainly. Uh, do us one more favor and tell the TV audience how they can go about right. okay. participating in your services. You can, of course, check out the Facebook page, Birmingham Ghost Walk. And uh, we are also on a website, <clears throat> Birmingham Historic Touring Company. Uh, you can get information from either of those, but most people are from out of town. Find out about us just by looking up things to do in Birmingham. We are the number one thing to pop up. Thanks for being with us, David. Certainly. And thanks for the balloon. Oh, certainly. You're welcome. And the tooth. Yeah, I hope you can use that in the future. This is Our Issues Birmingham. We'll see you next Sunday, I hope. <laughs> Play Eric Amarola's Race Day Mix. If you love them enough to crawl into a play place to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat.